the safe in the Savior's hands You are more than my words can say I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days I'll fix my eyes following your ways Forever free in unending grace Cause you are Wow, I miss going to church and worshiping God with all of you all. Hmm, I wish we all could go back. Coronavirus is still going around. We gotta keep safe. So, we will probably won't be going back to physical service. But anyhow, we're really glad that you kids are here with us today. So, this month, we're starting a brand new series called Run the Race. And in this one of the race, we're going to run a 5K marathon at the end of the whole series. Oh, 5K! Wow! Do you know what the 5K is? 5K is 5 kilometers. That's a long way to run. Okay, never mind. I'm a little nervous, but for us to run this race, we need a plan and commitment to finish the race. So, commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. So, our plan is First, we need to stretch our muscles. Ugh. Then, we'll start by running around. We will eat right and we're gonna stay on time. This is my favorite part. <laughs> Once we are all rested and ready, then all of these things will be part of our training plan. You know what? I've got an idea. What if all of you help us to train our 5K? Do you think you can train along with us? Great! First off, we need to see how well we all work together. We're going to do a 1 minute fast run on the spot. Shall we do it like this? Okay? Are you guys all ready? I want to challenge you to stand up from your seat and do this together with us. I'll be watching you, okay? On your mark, get set, go! Come on guys, we can do this! Come on, come on! Let's stand up and run together! Woo! You guys are doing great! We're almost there, almost halfway! You can turn around. Okay, we have less than 30 seconds left. Come on guys, don't stop running! A little bit more. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ooh. Wow, guys, that was intense. But we need to keep this common attitude of commitment going. Never stop and don't give up. Okay, now that we're done with that, there is another type of exercise that we can do to work out. And that is to praise God. So it's time for worship. I know you guys have a little bit of energy left to sing and dance. So let's go! One word and the dark became light I believe it, I believe it, yeah You spoke my name and my heart came to life I believe it, 
it, I believe it, yeah. I wanna sing about it, I wanna scream and shout it.
again today. Sadly, Martha and Samson are busy and can't join today, but they tell us to say hi. So, as you all know, we're starting a new series called Run the Race, and it's all about commitment. Commitment is really, really important because when you run the race, you need to continuously work on it. That's the same as anything you have in life. Remember, commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. Oh, so I know to be able to finish this 5K race, I need to be committed to training and practice. And so in the same way, if I want to do anything else that is important, I also need to be committed and train and practice as hard as I would for a race. Hmm, I would need a plan. Is that why the Apostle Paul uh, talked about running a race in a letter um, when he wrote to the church in Corinth? He must have wanted to help the Corinthians to understand what commitment is all about. Here, here, let's listen to what he wrote. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 25. It says, In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. All who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Paul used the example of running a race to illustrate something way more important. Hmm, let's take a minute to think about what it takes to run a race to help us understand a little bit better of what Paul is getting at. Right, after this, we're going to go and have our coach Rosie take over and help us understand more about this scripture. Hi everyone, I'm Coach Rosie and I'm here to train you for your race. Running a race is not simple. If you want to run a race and not only finish it but also to win it, you will need to listen to me and work with me. Wow! Sounds like we're in for some tough training! Don't think that you can just get out of the couch and go. It's a lot harder than you might think. First, you'll have to make a training plan. You'll have to start months in advance and decide when you're going to make time in your day to practice running. You have to plan how you're going to run, starting from small distance, then working yourself up. You need to plan to run steadily, month after month and after months. Oh, this is gonna whip us into shape. Once you have a plan, then it's time to move. You start by running a few hundred meters at first, then you add on more and more just like you planned. As your body gets stronger, you can go further and further. But training isn't just about moving your body. It's also about you to fill your body with the right stuff. You'll have to stay hydrated, eat healthy and build your muscles. You have to put the right stuff into your body so that you can get stronger. This sounds like so much work! This last one might surprise you. You will have to get a lot of rest so that you can be fully charged and you can recover from all 
all the hard training you put your body through. That's especially important in the days right before your big race. <laughs> I think this will be my favorite part of the training. As you can see, running a long race takes a lot of hard work. You have to make a training plan, then put your plan into action. You also have to make sure to eat right and get lots of good sleep. You have to do all of those things to do your best running. That's what Paul meant when he said, run in a way that it will get you the prize. Yes, yes, but he wasn't just talking about running an actual race, right? Hmm. He wanted the Corinthians to understand that there's something else that we should train for and it's way more important than running a race. We should have a training plan for our relationship with God. Paul also said that all who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Our relationship with God lasts forever. That's what we really live for. It's like a race that you and I are running every day. In fact, we're running it right now. If we want to run the race well, we need to live out what matters most. We need to do what Jesus said is the most important thing. Jesus once said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love Him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God. Love others. That's what Jesus said is most important. That's what we need to do every day. And if we want to do it well, we need a training plan. But how do we make a plan for our relationship with God? How do we grow stronger in our relationship with Him so that we can choose to love Him and love others every single day? We can grow in our relationship with God when we take time to hear from Him. We can hear from God when we read what's written in the Bible. As we do, we discover that we really can trust God no matter what. We can also pray. We can take time to talk to God and stay connected to Him. We can tell him, thank you. We can say, you're sorry. We can tell him how we feel about anything that is going on in our lives. We can also talk about God. And we can talk about what we believe. We can listen to others and learn from them too. We can live for God in everything that we do. We can worship God. Not just by singing, but by the way we live, the way we treat others, and the choices we make every day. Hear, talk, pray, live. These are the training steps that you need to remember for this week. Every step of our training plan is important as we learn to live out what matters most. Now that we have our faith plan, it is important that we practice. That's what commitment is all about. Okay, so maybe you already read your Bible, or maybe you also already talk to God, and you share the Word with other people, and that's great. Mm, however, maybe you could also be um, someone who hasn't done any of these things. Uh, but 
That's fantastic too, because now we can all take a step forward and do our best to commit to making a plan and putting it into practice. So let's do this. Okay, okay, so let's stay committed so that we can live out what Jesus said is most important, loving God and loving people. Let's pray and ask God to help us to do that. Dear God, we want to thank you for the, hope, for the words Paul wrote in his letter. We are still learning from them a thousand of years later. God, please help us to run the race well and practice what matters most. Help us to grow stronger in our relationship with you so that we can love you and love other people every day. We know we can only do that with your help. We love you and we pray all, the, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So kids, remember, we can hear God's word through the Bible. We can pray and talk to God. We can talk to our friends about God. Each day, we can live what we believe by loving God and loving others. Take a look at this month's memory verse. It's from 1 Timothy 4.8. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. Hmm, I think the kids hangout will be able will be able to help me to understand this verse and this week's lesson more. So we hope to see all of you there. Bye bye. Keep practicing and training, okay? Bye for now.